and welcome to this CodeBuddies.org live coding session. CodeBuddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. Today we will be continuing working on the Western Friend website. Western Friend is the official publication of Quakers in Pacific, North Pacific, and Intermountain Yearly Meetings. We are reporting this website from Drupal, uh, which has been an ongoing development process um, for around five years of incremental development. And we're gonna, we've been rebuilding it for the last year in Wagtail CMS. Uh, Wagtail, in case you haven't seen it, is a really remarkable project. Uh, it's essentially WordPress for Drupal. It gives you an content management or admin UI uh, with with high degree of usability, it's very elegant. It's already in use on by some uh, fairly large organizations, and it has a lot of interesting features like block-based content management, um, image handling with cropping and point of interest tagging. Um, you can fully customize the dashboard. You can add charts and layouts, uh, customize the menu. It's really flexible and it integrates uh, with client apps. I think it provides REST API and maybe a GraphQL uh, API out of the box. I'll have to verify that. I keep saying that. I'll check that. Uh, I haven't used that feature yet for this project. So what we're working on today is a feature for Western Friend. Um, under the magazine, we've got this um, deep archive, which are these issues of the magazine that were published on the Internet Archive. And they date back to 1929, and they're physical newsletters that were published and distributed. And they've all been digitized, and uh, you can see here on the Internet Archive the the item Friends Bolt in January 1929. Uh, each of these has an identifier. There's this interactive um, PDF page turning widget. You can view side by side or single page or multiple pages. Uh, it even has full text search. For example, if I search for Stanford, let's see if this works. We should see a few pages. I'm moving my microphone. Sorry for the noise there. Uh, so now we see it's actually highlighting the block of text in the on the page. It's pretty cool, uh, if you ask me. So yeah, the Internet Archive is really a great organization. They're also a nonprofit, 501c3, incorporated in uh, California. They're known for the Wayback Machine, which is taking snapshots of the internet uh, websites since 1996 or so, for a while now. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, they've got a lot of video, movies, music, books, and even uh, like old computer software they're archiving. Okay, so today is a little bit of a special occasion. I'm going to have club mate <laughs> to kick things off. The hiccups, I hope I don't get the hiccups on the stream. So all of our source code for this new project is on GitHub. As we mentioned, we've been working on this for over a year now. And we're hoping to wrap it up, the main uh, de development in the next month or so. So that we can migrate the website to the new platform. Okay. So we're working on the deep archive feature. Actually, need to start our environment here. Switch to the poetry um, virtual management tool. I'm not sure what else to call it. So I'll double check. I'm going to leave this open because I need to check the uh, structure, content types, the archive issue. I think I missed a couple of fields. Hmm. 
somehow. Our deep, our, this faceted search over here on the deep archive is allowing me to ah, filter by date created. We're actually using a Drupal internal um, field published date or created date, which comes um, by default on Drupal nodes. But well, Wagtail pages also have a created date. So let me just double check this. Let's go to the Deep Archive magazine model. So essentially, the Deep Archive issue is inherited from page. Okay, so I think we're good to go here. If I load this up. So I don't have things organized very well yet. So let's go to the Wagtail admin. I created a page, uh, one deep archive issue here. If I edit that. Hmm. So Wagtail doesn't let you this created date through the UI, unless it's similar to the go live date. Let me just double check. Never really paid attention to the, the go live dates. So. Go live expired. Has this first published at? Let me see if I can add this first publish to add uh, to the editing interface. There we go. So this will allow us to Essentially, say that this was published. Oh, it was published. <laughs> we have to. Some of these are going back to 1929. And the uh, Wagtail default calendar widget doesn't let you specify dates prior to 1950. So, I had to use a different um, widget. Uh, let's see what we were working on the arc of the um, memorial minutes. Here, this memorial model. Mm, we have these dates, fields. Ah, here you go. Daytime picker input. I need to import that from flat picker. Actually, very top. Ah, we already have it. Here, go back down to archive. Mm. Issue, first full shed, there we go. All right, so now this is the default wagtail uh, date picker widget. It's, I think it's jQuery date picker. But we are using now this uh, flat picker, which is, I think, a little bit nicer UX. December 1st, something like that. Now if we publish it. So there's actually a lot we can add to this feature. First, we don't have any, on the admin section, we don't have any way of just navigating to the magazine content, including the, the um, 
deep archive. So that could be a, a feature we could add here. Mm, secondly, in the front end, we don't have this faceted search. So that might be something I could work on today. is a year created so that's what we want is to be able to select all the issues from a particular year this could, might as well be a drop down then you know hmm. you can see it you might notice they change aspect ratio at some point So for faceted searching, let me just go ahead and commit these changes. I'm going to leave this uncommitted. It's temporary. We'll need a, a deep archive index page, uh, so I can also add that. So let me just create a to-do list real quick. So we'll touch base on a little bit of the regular magazine issues just for consistency. Okay, what else would we do here? So let's go ahead and start at the top, Deep Archive Index. So what we basically do is we create these uh, content types that have multiple entities like magazine issues, magazine articles, Deep Archive or Archive Issue, Archive Article. Uh, but then we need a page that'll render those. And typically in, in Django, you would define a view and a static template. However, um, the page, there's some placeholder text on the page like an introductory text for example or the page title that um, the editor, editor of the content the website or Western friend editor will periodically want to change so in order to allow that we have to define these sort of one-off landing pages or index pages here's an example magazine article index page let me just grab the magazine index page because I think this is going to be similar in fact, it, uh, it has some fields that we'll use. It defines sub-page types, what can be added underneath of it. Um, index pages should only have one index, I mean one instance. Um, then we want to pass in some template context so that we can display the issues that are underneath it, uh, including, it's usually it's the page 
child, children. Uh, it looks like we'll want to do pagination, and that pagination should probably uh, also take into account the, the filter. So anyway. I'll just grab all this as sort of a boilerplate. We'll bring it down to where we're working. And I don't remember. I think it would have to be defined towards the end, so. And then we are archive. Calling this deep archive, so I'll just stick with that. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. So it has a, an intro field which has some basic markdown, WYSIWYG editor. And then we want the editor to be able to edit that content, the content editor, so we have to tell Wagtail to display it, to display it. And then we want, in this case, archive issues to be created underneath. So there's only one count of this page. Oh, um, take out the get context now that I think about it a little bit more. For the time being, because I, I believe, because I believe I'll be able to rely on the um, Page children, oops, uh, and somehow filtering that query said, hey, what's up, level two? Happy New Year. How you doing? Happy New Year's Eve. Happy. Uh, hope you got a little taste of beverage. I'm drinking Club Mate. <laughs> and I have some uh, alcohol-free, uh, I can't remember what it's called. Some kind of, it's made here in Finland. Some sort of champagne <laughs> made from birch roots or something like that. All right. What are you up to today, level two? Oh, yo. Hey, level two. <laughs> um, man, I just, last night I was jamming on this thing called Ninjam. Check this out. I used this like 12 years ago or more. <laughs> and uh, I just somehow came back across it. I think I was like getting ready to set up a droplet on DigitalOcean. And now they have this DigitalOcean marketplace, which has a bunch of pre installed apps, server side apps. And they have this Ninjam server. And I was like, hey, I recognize that. And I recognize that logo, Kakos, or however you say it, incorporated. And I checked it out, and then lo uh, long short, I was able to get it up and running. Basically, you need to install Reaper. It's this digital audio workstation. Uh, it's really nice also. It's not open source. I'm, you know, I'm not so strictly uh, open source. I really try to use open source software as much as possible. Um, but this Reaper, it comes with Ninjam installed. So what Ninjam is, is this real-time jamming over the internet. Uh, you can get in there and, and jam with other musicians. It's pretty cool. And there's like people there like all the time, like right now, if we look. Well, stand corrected. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there's several servers and people are playing. And then they have this ninbot. Dot com. And you can hear the people that are jamming right now. You can just jump into the session and see where people are from and listen to what they're playing. So if you're interested, it's pretty cool. <laughs> One more thing worth mentioning is there's a couple of these Ninjam clients. One called Ninjam.js. Where did it go? For Google Chrome. Uh, which might be something we could use in our um, our development. It's JavaScript, and it has a 
hasn't been developed for a while, but the developer is still pretty active. I opened an issue asking for help, and they answered uh, in about an hour. So, you know, that's good response time for a project that hasn't had a commit since 2016. And basically what it does is you hop in there and you get in this room and you can chat with people and each person can transmit their audio, whether it's coming from your mic or if you have like an audio interface and you can run it from your you know DAW or something or something like a external keyboard or whatever. And that's it. And people jam and it's pretty low latency and you can get some real time stuff going. The logo animates on the Cocos site. Cocos site. Yeah, when you launch uh, this this logo here, or on the Reaper site. This one. Anyway. Um, the Reaper is only like sixty dollars, so <laughs> I mean it's like a pretty good deal. I've been a Reaper advocate. I've, um, one of my brothers-in-law, uh, Rick, is a really avid musician, and he's been using Reaper for a while. And um, uh, Kate and Ray Harmony, who do this podcast, this uh, YouTube channel called Hack Music Theory, they use Reaper in their example. It's it's a solid project, and it runs on. Windows, Mac, and Linux, which I think any first-class software should be cross-platform. And it comes bundled with a whole bunch of VST plugins, including this Ninjam. It was basically the only way I was able to get Ninjam to really work. There's a couple of other little clients that kind of work. And there's an open source, well, this is open source itself, but for whatever reason, they don't just publish a VST. I mean, I wish they would just publish a VST because I would like to actually put this Ninjam into um, um, VCB rack. Yeah, there's a module in VCB rack that lets you just load a VST plugin. And you can patch the VCB rack audio to a Ninjam session. And it actually, somehow I think it syn syncs the, well at least you have a BPM clock. I don't know if it's actually a MIDI uh, master clock or anything. Level two, I don't know, I didn't see it, the <laughs> uh, logo animate, but I'm not going to stare at it. Maybe, what, did it wink at you or something? Are you having like a Hunter S. Thompson moment? All right, so let's get back on track. <laughs> but yeah, we can get into this music stuff another time as well. This session I've already got sort of my wheels turning on the deep archive oh I will need to set the deep archive so it can only be added underneath mm. I guess underneath the magazine I'll have to look at that on this on the site the deep archive is a root level link But I think it should be a like slash magazine slash deep archive to be honest. stuff. All right, let's go ahead and add the content. 
So if I go, this needs to be done. Oh, I'm not running the server. So the welcome page, we need to add a magazine index page. The magazine tags index page, I think should also go under magazine, magazine slash tags. Yeah, probably. What are we adding? Our magazine. So here's the welcome texts. Now we can view it live, things are working. It's got some logic in there to, to query for content, which there's no issues, so it's not returning anything. If we go now and add a child page, I can add a deep archive index page, only one of those. And this is automatically gonna create a, a slug for me. I view that live and Oh, don't have a template. All right, so let's go ahead and add template file. page all right now we're gonna extend yeah twitch keeps doing things out of the corner of my eye my vision too on on one display I, I think it's like some kind of chat message but it turns out it's just something twitching on twitch <laughs> I don't know what it is. all right we're gonna extend extend uh, base stop html And then override the block for the content. Oh, hey, level two. Um, we're taking a look uh, for our little, little company we have founded here in Finland. Uh, we're thinking about using um, Odoo. So, <laughs> we, I think we're looking at we're gonna use uh, probably the official hosting and just a couple of modules off the bat. The CRM, I think sales and invoicing. Uh, right now we're using Wix for our website, so uh, we probably don't need the drag and drop website builder, but pretty excited about that. I wanna check that out in the future. I think that drag and drop website builder is part of the open source one, and I'm also, interested in the e-learning and certification uh, plugins that are, I think they're either going to be published soon or as part of the next release or something. Anyway, it's a really cool project. Oh, do. All right, so let's just put in the header here. And basically we have a page already, so let's just put the page title in there. Save it. I wonder what I keep seeing twitching over here. Maybe it's just my mouse cursor on the video. I have the live video preview and my mouse is moving around. But I keep the Twitch feed here so I can see if there's anyone chatting. Now if I, re I see I saved it, right? Yes. Close this tab because I'm not using it. Man, I'm running out of space up here. And if I refresh, hmm. Extends, is it plural? Should have this, I should remember this. Yeah, plural extends, natural language. Yeah, Club Monte, I don't have that very often. It's pretty good, pretty tasty. All right, so we've got our deep archive, excellent. Uh, oh yeah, and we have some um, intro, intro text, which is some rich text, so I need to uh, Load Wagtail Core Widgets. And this is going to give us 
a bunch of widgets I don't even know, but one of which is this rich text filter, which I'll just, for the sake of completeness, I'll show you um, tags. So tags it is. Wagtail. I tell users tags, why tell user bar, why tell UI tags? Whoa, where is that? Now I'm curious. Hmm. Why tell routable page tags, why tell images tags? Hmm, very cool. Advanced tags, I don't know what these are. We went to Wagtail Cortex, so let's just do that. Now I'll have a rich text one. Some good stuff here, though. All right, so. Let me make sure I have an intro. Yeah, I didn't say anything there. Say this is important, and I really want to draw attention to it. I'll publish the change, view it live, which opens another tab. So you can see, without the rich text, it's just putting raw HTML here. Very cool. Now let's get some page context here. I think with Wagtail page, I can get children. Get children, yeah. All right, so what we're gonna do Let's reset this home in a minute. Uh, some page types. I'm going to remove the archive issue, but first I need to allow archive issues to be created underneath the deep archive index. And then I have to move that one article I've created. Once I move that content, I'll enforce a uh, proper page hierarchy. But Uh, and then I'll reset the home.
cool. So the hierarchy in place, let's get the page context. Where's the request coming from? Let me double check that. So I just want to make sure I'm doing the correct. Ah, okay, so get context takes self request args quargs, and then you get super get context for the request. All right. So we just get the initial context, so nothing has changed there. Um, then what we want to do is add I mean in the template I can actually get the page, I can iterate over the page ch children. But we're going to want faceted searching, so I'm going to need this anyway. Let me just also go take a look by Django. So I'll leave this open. Year. Hmm. Essentially, what we're going to do is have a keyword like argument and a little bit of imperative uh, management of that um, query string and the UI, of course, by UI widget. So we need to get a, a distinct, looks like we'll need a, um, this should be indexed already. We need a list of distinct years that have been published. This is going back a while, but uh, distinct. So if I do IP, not IP address, but create a date, double underscore year, create a double underscore year, distinct. A filter, no, no, I'm not filtering yet. I just need so not doing the filter really. It's just values for a particular column and then the distinct values. Uh, for this, I think let's just turn to the the Django shell.
You know that song, Stay With Me? One of the lyrics are, won't you stay with me? Because you're all I need, it's clear to see. Hmm. All right. What makes you think of that song? I think I should be able to get, how do I get into the dang shell? Django flat picker. Yeah. What's the package name? Hmm. <sighs> Always little problems like this. What the heck? Just I heard it before, but I saw who's singing it, and it's a white guy. I thought I was a black woman, but it's a white guy. Like my skin color, I look like him, or he looks like you. Anyway, it's blown away. Now it's blown away is how I, when I saw it, how Justin Timberlake currently looks. He's aged. What do I do here? This is a really tricky situation. Because, yeah, I haven't checked out Justin Timberlake lately. I haven't paid much attention to Justin Timberlake, in fact, but maybe he's also using a lot of drugs and alcohol. So that would cause him to age a bit. Oh, well, I guess he looks all right. Yeah, I guess we all just age. When, when was he born? 1981, so yeah. He's 38 years old. Cool. So I can't get in my Django shell because it's flat picker, <laughs> which we need to use. I can't import it.
So yeah, I'm not sure what to do. Okay, so level two says, I was listening to the song Say Something and I was watching the video and somebody pointed out, that, hey, isn't that Justin Timberlake? And I was like, no. And they were like, well, he got the same name. And he looks like that, it looks like him. And you were just blown away. So this is a pretty strange issue. Here's the flat picker import. Typically when I install some kind of a, you know, Django or Wagtail package, it just goes right here in my installed apps and things just work. Granted, I'm not really importing from any of these. too much. What I'll just have to do is some sort of sloppy debugging, print debugging. <laughs> I can try again to get this Django debugger to work. Python debugger to work. Python Django. Yeah, same problem. No module named Flatpicker. Ah. Because the module's name is Django Flatpicker. Let me make sure it's in my environment. I mean, it has to be. This is working. Level two, you got any idea of how I can get past this import error? You have, have you struggled with Python imports?
mean, I really like this flat picker project. in the JavaScript ecosystem, everything is half-baked. Well, that works. Ah. I think we'll have the same problem here, but let me just give this a try. If flat package is not going to work, uh, but this is it's still the same thing. You're installing a package. Let's just try it. Though. Is this actually? Depend on push up. No. All right. So now I need to find out where I've imported that. Date picker input should be the same though. So yeah, from flat picker, just uh, actually just sub bootstrap date picker plus. I should know right away now. Yeah. Oh wait. Yeah, because now I didn't even have to. Yeah, I did need to install add it to my installed apps. Okay. search replace oops now it had to I don't like having to throw a whole module out just because it's having import problems but I don't know. Moving forward, and the main thing is that we can select old um, years, so to speak, years before 1950, <clears throat> and get back to the main task at hand. So now, uh, actually, now the debugger should work. So closing, opening the debugger console. Which one's debugger? It looks like a bug. Okay, one moment, I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Level two, what are you up to? Are you doing any development? I want to check out one of your live streams soon. All right, so we got the server running. It's in debug mode, which is super exciting. I've been wanting to run in debug mode for a while, so I can do proper debugging. Oh, ah. this is, I think, why I uh, didn't do debugging before. Actually, I think I know why this is happening. We switched to user model. And the new user model doesn't have that field anymore. So. Wagtail custom user model. Whew, I'm going that. Well, essentially this is a bug that uh, probably shouldn't hard code that in there. Let's open a bug report. What I should really do is actually search for the line of code in the project. It's right here. I need to add that get username method, I suppose. Huh, that's just the weird thing. So let me just, I think I can fix this with the get username property on a user model. Uh, I just, maybe that's not documented or else I just overlooked it. Where is it?
packet. Username is not there. So this is coming from abstract email user uh, as part of auth tools. Hmm. I don't know if this is necessarily a wagtail bug. Well, one thing I can do is just implement this in Django auth tools. So I can open a pull request. I think it would be probably the best way to go forward. Really what it is is abstract email user. Needs a get username field. Well, here it has a get username field. Hmm. Check email user.
It seems like a bug because they shouldn't be looking for specific fields. I said they had fixed it. Um, 1433. If I have uh, a user though, with a get username property, that should just work. But I think at the same time, Wagtail should assume that. that um, hmm. well, the first name field does, uh, they check for that so, uh, in a safe way, but this get username method, hmm. Let me see if this is a Django method. Yeah, I think we should have API parity here. Ah, but they, it's a convention to use the username field. I'm deep in the weeds here. This recent few uh, pull requests have been a little more, a little more uh, involved than I had would have expected.
called Grammarly. This is a really helpful extension level two, by the way. Um, I use this all the time. Let me just log in real quick, one moment. Basically what it does is it, uh, I don't need two where I've been using it for a while now. It checks my uh, grammar on all these things. I'm just, uh, what you do is, uh, well, it says I'm being forceful here. It also helps, you know, check your tone. Uh, here we go. So auth tools, that can be capitalized, that's fine. And I don't think I'm being too forceful, to be honest. It's a, I asked a question, just, just a constructive suggestion. So I disagree, respectfully disagree. Um, maybe I'm gently nudging the conversation in a particular direction. Very strong intensity. That's a little bit better. Good grammar, neutral tone. This can be very helpful on uh, these online discussions when we <laughs> get triggered pretty easily or people take offense. And it's very hard to communicate intention when you don't really intend to be offensive or whatever or condescending or too critical, but you just need to discuss something. So, let me see how my grammar is here. <laughs> uh, this thing. His auth tools should be capitalized. That's about it. Hmm. Oh, it says it's got four suggestions. This is a list, maybe it doesn't realize it's a list. Implement is the correct word here. How about define? Oops. All right, I like it. Little improvements. Okay, well, it's almost eight o'clock. I need to wrap up. What am I trying to do here? I just want to test. So I'm not gonna run it in debug mode. It's not working again. I think I can get past this error uh, some other point, but 
just ending debug mode now. And running the server. admin section I should have this new date picker widget if I go to the deep archive actually I just wanted to view it here and then edit this child page uh, we have a date widget ah, that's not working trade-offs um, so this could be because this jQuery. I don't dislike jQuery. I'm just trying to keep my dependencies pretty slim. Well, I went from one error to having just a non-functional library. So I'm going to go back to using Flat Picker.
and a half hours in. Haven't made as much progress as I was hoping to do. Uh, but I've got to wrap it up. did we change? Let's go ahead through here. Well, I've got the get username field. Maybe I'll implement that. Uh, what did we change here? Initial context method, which doesn't really do anything. I know it's useful. Okay, so did some tail chasing today, more or less. A little bit of reorganizing the hierarchy of the content. Um, when I continue, we'll go after, uh, after other issues in this to do list, um, including making the admin menu and building a faceted search. In fact, maybe I should do the admin menu first as it's a little uh, easier to do. And always being diligent with my grammar. Nice. All right, well, thanks again for hanging out on Slack level two. It's always nice to chill, even uh, if you're lurk in lurk mode, which is fine also. Happy New Year. Hope you're having a good holiday and getting to Spend some time with family and friends, enjoy some good food, maybe some uh, just festivities. If you're checking this out on YouTube, do feel free to leave any questions or comments below the video. I will try to respond to those promptly. This has been a CodeBuddies.org live coding session. Really hope to see you around the CodeBuddies community. There's a lot, a lot of groups forming there. Uh, so if you're not so interested in Python and Django development, you can find birds of a feather who are studying Android development, um, PHP, Java, Rust, CSS, computer science, Elixir, <laughs> Ruby, did I say Ruby? It's got a lot, AWS, a lot of different study groups going on here and a very active uh, open source project uh, rewriting the codebytes.org platform. Great. Well, thanks again for watching and have a great day and happy holidays if you're watching this around New Year's.